Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to yet another in-depth review here on NNT Auto Reviews. My name is Tyler behind the camera as always and today we are checking out the new facelifted 2020 Volkswagen Passat in the top tier SEL trim level. So before we get into the nitty gritty and the details, I want to go over the window sticker quick with you guys just so you get an overview. Uh, we have our fuel economy data up here. We also have our crash ratings now, which this car is not rated quite yet because it has just been released to the dealerships uh, on the update here. We also have our parts content, our standard features, which I'll zoom in a little bit so that you could uh, read them off. Of course, you could pause the video so that you could see all of the information. And we could go back up here. We still have a few more standard features and some warranty information. And then we also have our options. So we do have a, a couple of minor options here, which is the, uh, we have the all-weather monster mats, which cost an extra 235. And then we also have the uh, cargo blocks, which is pretty neat. I have that feature in my own car. I definitely suggest opting for that, and we will get into that once we get into the um, the cargo area of the car. And we could zoom in a little bit down here, and we see our total suggested price is two thirty-two thousand three hundred and thirty-five dollars. Not too bad for a top-of-the-line mid-size sedan. And we also have a destination fee of nine hundred twenty dollars, which, believe it or not isn't bad at all. Now taking a walk around to the side of the Passat you can really see the body lines right over here goes from the front of the headlights all the way back to the taillights. Looks pretty neat. Um, we can talk about our wheelbase and the color options it comes with. So the uh, color we're working with here is called Tourmaline Blue and it's a really really neat uh, color sort of like a teal I guess you could say like a mixture between blue and green and our wheelbase stands at 110.4 inches and finally walking around to the rear of the new Passat you could see that they um, accentuated the depth of the, of the tailgate by spelling out Passat which is a pretty uh, pretty cool and welcome feature and we could also talk about our drivetrain which is limited to front wheel drive for the entire Passat lineup Alrighty, so now we can start off the details and features of the exterior up front with the headlamps. And these are really good looking headlights. Uh, fully LED for both your high and low beams. Um, they also do adjust um, when you're going around corners and through hills and whatnot. So they'll uh, rotate themselves. You also have your turn signals up there too in the same unit and your daytime running lights. If we move a little bit south, we can see we have some uh, plastic trimming that goes all the way across and on a little bit on the sides. And you could also see that we have parking sensors that run the span of the front bumper. So they're not just on the face of the bumper, they're also on the side. And take a look at that redesigned grille for 2020. You have a very bold um, chrome element on the bottom and especially on the top. Now you also have these uh, smaller accentuations going through the Volkswagen emblem. And speaking about the Volkswagen emblem, there are sensors behind the emblem itself for uh, features like your adaptive cruise control or forward uh, collision assist. Very good looking and bold front end, it definitely catches your eye with the larger chrome bars. Now continuing along with these bold elements, we could see that the, the hood has some very strong creases on the side and moving towards the center and even towards uh, the more dead center as well. So that's a very uh, creased hood, again looking very bold. As far as our wheel choice goes on the SEL, we have some pretty cool looking 18-inch um, alloy wheels. They are a do dual tone um, alloy so we have the kind of machine finished on the face of the wheel and the black pockets 
and we have all season tires measuring 235.45. Around the side we have the um, chrome surrounding the windows. We also have some pretty nice mirrors with a couple of features such as uh, the turn signals on the mirror and we also have the uh, blind spot warning as well. But down the side we can see the nice crease that runs the span of the vehicle. And we also have um, the smart key entry you can see this little indentation on the door. The car is unlocked right now. If you had the key fob within a couple feet of the vehicle, you could just press that. It'll lock the vehicle and fold in the mirrors on the SEL. And if you just want to get back in, you just put your hand behind the handle and it'll unlock. And that smart key entry is only on the front two door handles. You can see our shark fin antenna up top as well as the sunroof. Same setup back here for the wheels. You have solid disc brakes in the rear and ventilated discs in the front. So our taillight setup is fully LED, even the turn signals and the reverse lights. Really neat looking design for the running lights too and the brake lights. We also have reflectors just south of that. The Passat logo is spelled out across the deck lid. We also have some nice chrome trim at the bottom and some hidden exhausts underneath there. And again the parking sensors run the span of the rear bumper even on the sides. Okay, so coming along with the refreshed exterior, we also have a refreshed interior. And they do give us three different color options on the top tier SEL trim. The one we're working with today is called Titan Black. You could also choose a more of a brown or a tan interior as well. So very nice update to the interior. Now, you will notice some things that carry over, but most of the things on the interior are all new and very stylish, such as this faux wood trim. We also have the metallic door handles. We have our unlock and lock, our mirror controls over there. If we take a look down here, we have our trunk release. We also do have a Fender audio system. Now, I had some trouble finding out how many speakers there are, but I did do a test on the audio system sounds great there's just enough bass uh, the sound quality is very clear and it gets plenty loud enough you also have a nice padded armrest right here our window controls and uh, window lockout for the children right there taking a look at our seats they are full powered with the two-way lumbar you also have three person memory as well Very, very nice quality, real leather on this car, and it really reminds me of the leather Audi uses on their A6. So it's definitely a very high quality leather seat. To the left of the steering wheel, we also have a couple of controls here, which are headlight controls. You can turn them off, put them on auto, or just manually turn them on. We also have the gauge dimmer, Nice air vent over here with the faux wood trim. 
And we also have a decent sized um, storage pocket there, which looks like it has some coin holders in there. You can really put whatever you want. Uh, it's really nice size. And from this angle, you could also see the lever for the tilt telescoping steering wheel. We have a dead pedal down there, and your HUD release is also down here. And we have some pretty nice um, machine pedals down there, too. Okay, so here's the key fob for the new 2020 Facade, and this is one of the elements that's carryover. Now, they've had this key fob for a very long time, but hey, why um, change something if it works so well? So we have the lock, unlock, remote start, and trunk release. We also have the physical switchblade key, if you need to use that. The Volkswagen emblems on the back, and you also have a panic alarm on the side. Now all you need to do to start the vehicle is just make sure the car, the um, key for the car rather, is on the inside. You can just put your foot on the brake and the start stop um, logo is right here. Alright, so let's start off the driver's cockpit here with talking about the steering wheel. Now with the SEL you get the nice stitching and the grip holsters up top. It's a very nice wheel with the soft leather uh, wrapping. But as far as functionalities go we have two sets of buttons. Now mainly over here this will contr control your adaptive cruise control and with this button here you could set the your um, comfortable distance with the car that's traveling ahead of you. So I believe it gives you about three different distances and it will show up on the screen in the center. And we also have our audio volume down on the bottom here. Crossing over the airbag cover with the nice Volkswagen emblem, we have another set of buttons. So this is kind of your Bluetooth controls, um, uh, voice commands, as well as skipping between different um, songs and whatnot with your radio. And you also have the silver buttons, the OK, and the up-down arrow for your screen up here, which we can get into just a little bit. Now this will kind of be my default screen with the digital speedometer. But if we use the down and up arrows, we can get more information. Um, and I'll kind of cycle through quickly so that you could see. And now we could use the silver buttons to go between more menus. So we can go to the right. It'll show you all of your different assistance systems. We also have our audio screen, our navigation, phone screen, and then all of our um, assistance systems that you can turn on and off. So it's nice that you can customize. So this car has a whole host of safety features. Uh, the lane assist, the rear traffic alert, the blind spot, and the uh, front assistant, which um, will kind of warn you if you're approaching a car too quickly. And we also can cycle through all of our different settings through here. There are also a whole host of more settings through the uh, main um, screen in the center. So very nice screen that uh, Volkswagen gives you between the gauges. Um, however, the gauges themselves are pretty neat looking as well with the red accents. So we have our rev counter and um, temperature gauge. We also have our speedometer and fuel gauge over here. Very nice upper dash with some stitching going over the gauge cover. It is a soft touch dash. We can come down here where we see a couple of air vents and our um, hazard buttons. And also behind the steering, I forgot to mention, we have our stock for our wipers over here. Also our turn signals and um, to shut off our lane keep assist is right over here. And we also have the high beams and whatnot over here like usual. 
Now here we have a very nice screen that set up that you get in the 2020 Passat. Now I know it's not exactly the largest screen you can get in a day and age where some screens are 10 inches, something crazy like that. This is a more subdued um, but very useful screen in that manner. Now we have all of our shortcuts at the side which are kind of like a uh, touch sensitive. They're not like an actual button so we can go to our radio screen here and we can set up all our presets at the bottom change our source at the bottom there uh, station list our tuning which we also do have a physical tune knob people will be excited about that so that's pretty much it for the radio screen now you can switch between the AM, FM, Sirius XM we also have our media screen so once you plug in your phone you have the Apple CarPlay, Android Auto and all that uh, good stuff we also have our phone screen over here, our voice commands, we also have our navigation screen. Now um, the SD card isn't put in for the navigation yet since this is a brand new card. It literally just showed up a couple days ago to the dealership. We also have our app connect which you press that button it'll activate the Android Auto um, Apple CarPlay. We have our different sound settings right here and then this is kind of uh, your home screen which you could cycle between uh, all of your different uh, shortcuts I guess you could say we could go quickly through our settings and see what we could customize here so there is a decent amount of um, configuration with this screen as well and then within each screen you could go into more settings and customize the screen even more so bearing that in mind it is a pretty neat system and I could take you know ten minutes just describing all the features in the screen but I wanted to give you a quick overview just so you guys are a little bit familiar uh, with the screen itself now we can take a walk down here where we have all of our climate control settings so very simple to use climate control uh, we have our heated seats at either side all of our different uh, where you want the air to blow so defrosters uh, body and feet and then we are circulating we have our uh, two knobs at either side for our temperatures and within we have uh, quick to access defrosters climate control off fan speed over here automatic function sync and then our different AC settings so extremely easy to use climate control down here we have a couple of power outlets so the 12 volt and then a USB we also have a nice uh, pad that goes in pretty deep as you can see and it has a good amount of storage in there down here we also have our gear selector for the 6 speed automatic pull it back into reverse so that you can see the reversing camera and that beep you could also hear the uh, parking sensors activate we also have neutral drive and then a sport mode and we also have a manual mode if you'd like to shift manually we have our start stop engine button over here to activate and deactivate our parking sensors and also to activate our um, auto parking feature so this car will actually park itself in certain circumstances which is pretty neat down here we have a couple of cup holders and a little storage tray to put change or whatnot we also have our manual parking brake which is nice to see one of these turning around we have the center storage console pretty nice with the contrast stitching you can also move it back and forth if you need uh, more uh, arm support Looking here, you have a decent amount of storage. We also have our rear view mirror, which is auto dimming. Up here, we have a bunch of controls for our interior lighting. Here, too, and then we also have a sunroof control. Um, more of your SOS and maintenance information up here. And a sunglass holder. 
So we do have a pretty standard sized sunroof here with a shade that blocks 100% of the light. But we also do have some vents in the shade so if you wanted to vent the sunroof upwards, have it open a little bit without the sun beating down on you, you guess you'll definitely get some air in there. Now the way the sunroof control works is if you press this part of the knob here, the sunroof will go into a vent mode, as you can see. And if you like to close it, pretty much just put your finger like this and pull down on the knob. And if you want to open the sunroof up, all you need to do is twist it. You also have a wind deflector here, which is fabric, and it pops up when the sunroof is open. And it's a pretty neat way to have a sunroof control in the manner that you can actually open the sunroof to whatever um, whatever amount open you want, I guess you could say. And then if you twist it all the way, it'll close. We also have our visors up here with a little bit of a holder, card holder and whatnot. We also have a mirror with a light, and the visors do extend to block sunlight from coming in over here. We also have a grab handle there too. So that pretty much does it for the driver's cockpit. Now we can hop out and check out what the uh, rear seats look like. I'm also going to adjust my seat to a normal driving position for my 5'10 self so you get a good idea of how much legroom you'll have back there. Alright, so checking out the rear quarters of the Passat. Now, it being a mid-sized sedan, of course you're going to have plenty of room back here. But taking a look at our door panel, you can really notice how large the rear door is. You have more of this nice um, full wood trim, a little bit of a tweeter speaker and a larger speaker down here. We have a bottle holder and a little bit of storage. Your window switch, of course and a nice padded armrest. So of course we have a bench seat back here and I'll hop in. I'll show you how much room we have. So again, I'm about five foot 10. And take a look at the amount of space I have for my knees to the seat back. It's pretty good. We have a storage pocket back here. Also on the back of the center console, we have rear air vents, heated rear seats, three stage, I might add, and you also have two USB charging ports. Right above my head, we also have some illumination for either side, the handle and coat hook as well. And again, the attention to detail on these seats is very impressive. It's almost Audi-like. If we fold down our center console here, we have a couple of cup holders which are covered by the plastic, so I'm going to leave it. And it's a very, very soft armrest. So next, let's take a look at what the front passenger space has to look for, and we'll open up the glove box and see how large that is. So the front passenger door is pretty much a mirror of the driver's door, just a few less buttons. We of course have one single window switch, but you still have the lock and unlock. A bunch of storage, the trim, and I'm very happy to announce that the uh, passenger seat has the same power adjustments as the driver does. I really like how they set up the dashboard in this where it looks like it's one continuous air vent and you have the single chrome strip looks looks very nice. You can still adjust the the air vent too in there. And if we open the glove box, looks like we have a very nice amount of storage with a shelf system where you can put your owner's manuals up top and a bunch of storage uh, down below. 
So that pretty much does it for the interior of the Passat. Pretty impressive uh, facelift for the car as well. Next we'll check out how much storage we have in the trunk. Now you can open the trunk a multitude of different ways, one including the button on the door. There's also a button right underneath the Volkswagen emblem. There's also that button on the key fob. I'm going to use the key fob just to show you that the trunk does pop itself all the way open for you. So we do have a bunch of accessories back here as you saw on the window sticker. This not included, this is my camera bag. However, we have the wheel lock kit back here. We also do have the cargo dividers, which are actually Velcro kind of walls, I guess you could say, that you could put into the trunk, and it sticks to the um, the mat right here, and you can kind of build a wall however you like it. I think they include eight different pieces, so you could kind of build a wall around your cargo and it won't slide around. You also have your roadside assistance kits and your monster mats, which are the all-weather floor mats. They also include a nice uh, trunk carpet, and if you lift that up, there's also another carpeting. And if you lift that up, you have the spare tire and all of your tools and whatnot. You also have these uh, tabs to where you could pull on either side to fold down the rear seats. You have some handles back here, which you could close the trunk down. And you can see your backup camera underneath there and the trunk release right underneath the first S in the Passat uh, logo. So opening the lid to the 18.5 gallon fuel tank. According to the window sticker, you should be seeing right around 23 miles per gallon in the city and about 34 on the highway, which is pretty good. Now you have the typical um, cap and tether thing, and then I'll show you once you open the fuel tank lid, you have this little pin that fits right in here and it'll stay there so it doesn't scratch your paint. Now it is suggested that you only use um, regular octane fuel or you can upgrade to uh, the 91 grade if you like. So to conclude this video I thank each and every one of you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed the updated 2020 Passat just as much as I have and I also hope you stay with us for future in-depth reviews.